Hello everybody, welcome back to your old cozy little dark closet bedroom podcast, The Pupil's Life. <laughs> um, my name is Nicholas Gomez and I am your, am I, what am I, am I, I'm, I'm your host tonight, I guess, um, and yes, I said tonight, I'm recording this past 7 p.m., um, which I know is early compared to the times I recorded the first few of these. Um, still haven't gotten a good schedule down with it, but, you know, maybe it's because of my fucking... Eh, don't let me get started so soon. I don't want to start complaining already. Um, how's your fucking life? What are you guys up to? Are you... If you're in Austin, Texas, you're going to ACL... Weekend one, right? You're gonna go see Tame Impala tonight, and just uh, have a have a fun time in the sun. Um, if you're anywhere else in the world, I don't know what the fuck you're up to. Maybe you're at work. Uh, maybe you're at home doing a puzzle, <laughs> a grayscale puzzle. I learned of that recently. I learned what a grayscale puzzle was. Um, I mean, I guess I already knew, but I had never heard it before, right? And um, and yeah, this this girl that said she believed in astro- astrology and but not in the way that everyone else does. Like, I take in childhood traumas and I take in your sun sign and I take in yada fucking yada. Um, one of those girls, right? <laughs> um, yeah, she just said she did a thousand five hundred piece grayscale puzzle that she was currently doing one and uh, me and my buddies were like well wow that's a I don't know man that's a pretty intense little hobby to have you know good for her good for her <laughs> look at me being all fucking patronizing right the Mexican in me that I don't recognize sometimes good for that girl good for that little good for that young woman doing something for herself <laughs> um no, I mean, it just sounds like something that would give me a headache to do. Or, uh... <laughs> um, yeah. But anyway, I don't give a shit what's been up with you. Why do I ask, you know? Maybe I do. But who who is this anyway, right? Um, it's funny when you start doing a podcast, you're like, who am I going to fucking... Who, who am I talking to, right? You almost just have to adopt this idea that you're like a character um i don't know because like i'm not talking to anyone in specific you know uh specifically i don't know sometimes i forget how to say shit in english um but yeah man i hope you guys are doing well Uh, my week's been better than the last couple weeks right i went through some fucking food poisoning for like five days five nights and uh, that was some of the most miserable, miserable shits of my life. Um, I probably took like 35 shits in each day. <laughs> and they were all like 12 ounces, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, that was that was terrible. I woke up sweating one night with like cold sweats. I was cold, but I was sweating like feverishly. And my kidney hurt. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so yeah, that was, that was two weeks ago. And then that last week, just this last week, I, uh, my apartment shut off the water for three days, two nights, three days. And, uh, I had to go shower at a friend's place. Um, well, right. First world problems. I mean, this is the fucking pupil's life. This is a white male story in Texas. So what did you expect for me to be talking about politics? (laughs) Uh, <laughs> be talking about my fucking privilege or something. I guess that's what I'm doing, right? Because just because I'm white, does it does that mean I can't complain about my water being shut off? Because I'm white, right? And so I don't have to deal with like living in fucking the East Riverside. What's it? I I live in East Riverside. Segregation segregated East Side. Is that what they call it these days? It's funny to be in a city for more than, 
like one or two years like for it to start to feel like you have like a history in this city um it's a pretty interesting feeling yeah i don't i don't have much to say about it but just this whole segregation thing it's like dude this has been happening since before i fucking got here like five years ago can we stop complaining about it um and yet here i am talking about politics uh but yeah man they shut off the water i got the fucking i didn't get the shits that time but all the shit that i had like accumulated from the food poisoning um that all came out right when the water got cut off right so i'm like taking shits on top of shits my bedroom smells like a public restroom (laughs) at your local grocery store um (laughs) those are the fucking worst uh but yeah, so I uh, had to do that, and then had to shower at my buddy's place, had to like not brush my teeth for two nights, and just, you know, I wear a night guard to sleep, because otherwise I fucking shred my teeth, and so I just had to wear the same like slimy, bloody mouth guard two nights in a row, and I had to, yeah, <laughs> that's the funny part, at least to me, yeah, I got, I got fucking two two buckets of water from the pool and i just like started flushing my shits with buckets of water from my pool (laughs) i wonder what my neighbors thought just (laughs) if anybody saw me from their window just like bringing my little ikea white trash can and taking a little scoop of the (laughs) my little share of the communal pool (laughs) uh taking my little share of the communal pool to flush my shits away (laughs) i mean it worked though you know i don't even remember where i learned that trick it's just something that like my dad told me when i was like five i was like dad there's no fun there's no water i just i just took a shit right but i'm like locked in the bathroom and it was like come because i had masturbated and (laughs) and i was too embarrassed for him to find out so i was like it's not flushing like what do i do he's like open up i'll I'll, I'll flush i'm like no it's like a really smelly one (laughs) and he's like was there is there a big just use the trash can just fill the trash can with water from the (laughs) and so that's probably how i learned i don't know um but yeah man how's how are you doing you're (laughs) it's a it's a fucking friday here in austin texas and people are out celebrating I'm at home resting, because I've been fucking drained, dude. My book finally came out. I'm trying to do all this Facebook advertising logistics shit that I don't understand, that I hate fucking doing. And, And yeah, man. I could sit at my computer for like only like two or three hours doing that, and at the end of it, I just feel like, all right, that was my, <laughs> that, that was my input for the day. Right. Let me go not come back for the next 10 hours. Um, yeah, it's just, I don't know. Maybe if I, if I really understood it, then I would see the creative side in it and I would enjoy it a lot more. But as it stands, I feel like I'm just fucking throwing darts, right? And seeing where they land. It's like creating an ad for a fucking book trailer is like oh what are the demographics oh well let's see at their family are they divorced are they separated i don't fucking know you know it's you gotta think about it and i'm just not i don't have the patience to think like all right this is what my book's about who would fucking read my book like um where do you find those people right i put like new york city just new york city and la just because i'm like ah, oh, well like right like charles bukowski was a writer right he was in la a lot of people probably read in LA, right? <laughs> like that's my fucking that's the kind of reasoning that I'm using to market my book. So it's no wonder that I'm going to sell, you know, 15, 20, 25 copies. And but you know that's not why I'm doing it. So fuck everyone that's measuring me by my book sales, right? Uh everybody always asks me that. That's the first thing they ask. And it's it's fine. I'm I'm half kidding here. I mean it's fucking it's a it's a natural question to ask right but it's always like oh oh your book came out today did you sell like did you sell already like a a lot of copies and i'm like dude what i don't uh do you know me you're like you hang out with me on a daily basis does it look like 
I sold like a fucking hundred thousand dollars worth of copies <laughs> and I'm still coming to eat at fucking at the at the what at the at the McDonald's <laughs> on the corner by the bike shop, right? Uh no, I haven't sold a fucking hundred thousand dollars worth of copies. And uh I'm not gonna sell a hundred thousand dollars worth of copies. And all the fucking meditation, like, super successful people that, like, try and just take on a little bit more of a voice like this. And, uh, you know, they probably would say that I'm getting in my own way, right? I'm in, I'm getting in the way of my own success by saying that I'm not going to sell 100,000 copies. Because the first step in selling 100,000 copies is believing that you will sell 100,000 copies. And, uh... I'm honestly more just excited to start writing again, dude. I've I took kind of a little bit of a um unasked for break, right? I've just with with putting all this shit out there, you know, it's not been easy. Uh uh exposing myself like that on on social media and even it's only it's mostly people that I know, right? But those are the people that take it the the, the hardest or the or the best. Uh, which I've had a little bit of both, mostly, mostly the latter though. Uh, and so, yeah, no, I haven't sold a hundred thousand dollars worth of copies. My paperback is fucking delayed because the file that I got from my, uh, uh, ah, the, the, this, just delayed. It's just delayed, right? Why throw people under the bus? Um, but yeah, my paperback is delayed. And that was annoying, right? Because it's my fucking... It was my birthday yesterday. So I'm like posting this. I'm releasing the book on my birthday. And I'm just like, oh, dude, this is going to be a good day. It's my birthday. My fucking memoir that I've been holding on to for like 10 months is finally coming out. Oh, man, everything is... I'm going to go see that new Joker movie. Oh, this is so exciting. And then I hit publish and a fucking 10 hours later, right? Right as I'm walking into the Joker, it's like... Oh, your paperback was not accepted because of this, this, this. Just fix it and submit it again. And it'll be okay. And I'm like, oh, fuck, dude. Now I gotta sit through this movie pretending that that's not what I'm thinking about for the whole thing. And it's a two-hour-long movie. Um, But it was a good exercise in just fucking being present. I don't know. Because at the end of the day, I've been getting very, like, oh, man, dude this should be this way instead of this way or like why do people have to be so mean and fucking send messages that are like just hurtful and like trying to change people right Uh, and so yesterday was a little bit of an exercise and like ah your paperback's not gonna come out today son it's your birthday what did you expect right your father sent you the fucking cash in an envelope (laughs) from your brother like all the all the cash that my brother had saved up <laughs> from his tips my dad was just like hey take some money out of the account give it to him in cash put it in an envelope write happy birthday in english right <laughs> even though i'm even though i speak spanish to him um and uh and yeah just give him give him the cash just just tell him just just give him the cash don't even tell him anything just just give him the cash he'll know <laughs> uh but it's fucking, I mean, you know, cash at the end of the day is a, is a poor man's problem. <laughs> or what's that, what's that fucking Buddhist saying, right? Is the, I don't know, the simpletons issue. Um, but yeah, so I got the fucking birthday. I was just like, dude, it's not gonna work. All right, accept it. Enjoy this fucking movie. Just uh, submerge, immerse yourself in the experience uh and i did dude and i i credit the movie really f- for that i don't credit myself i credit um just todd phillips and joaquin phoenix just fucking robert de niro everybody in that movie was just just i don't know everybody added something you know everybody added an extra layer every single character added like an extra little layer even that fucking guy uh, the clerk, there's a clerk that's the, he plays, uh, 
what's the fucking ah oh man i don't know I don't, i'm not gonna try and remember names right but even the little clerk that's in not little but even the fucking clerk he's actually pretty big uh, <laughs> focus even the clerk in the in inside of arkham dude that whole scene with him and the joker that's like oh just just adds this extra like realist realism to it i don't know it's hard to talk about a movie i don't talk about movies for that reason because you, i just feel like i'm using rehashing words that people have used for other movies and they're like oh this was this was so it was like magical realism with a little twist of like a little bit of a psychedelic rock right like if they're talking about music i guess um uh, and all the characters were so like embellished and like they were so layered and structure was like so it flowed well man like point is this movie it made me feel something right and that's usually how i gauge uh my my one to ten scale for a movie for a book for a song is always like what am i feeling number one am i feeling something and number two how strong is that feeling right like, if I fucking play Metallica, or not Metallica, but just like like, like emo metal or something, just something really brash, I'm just going to like fucking flick my earphones off, like just f- fucking flick them off and just be like, ah, the fuck, dude, who listens to that garbage, right? But I'm not going to be like, that. that's as far as that's going to go. So that's not like, I, I would give emo metal like a, like a, one or a two out of ten right um but this joker movie man i mean if my brother and i hadn't watched this together like if i'd been watching this at home by myself i would have been weeping dude there were some moments in this movie where i felt like the tears come up and my fucking my like discomfort like repressed them you know they like came up kind of like waves against shore and then they just like like nope no he's not letting us through today Uh, and they like come back like oh maybe it changes night nope no still not letting us through today uh there was several moments in the movie that i felt that way and and it's even scary to fucking talk about the movie right because it's like if you say you empathize with him then people are like oh he empathizes with school shooters Everybody, he emphasizes with school shooters because this movie is about a school shooter and the violence is danger for people that want to be copycats and fucking, yeah, you fucking, me. <laughs> I just want to complain and fucking be angry about something, right? Uh, but to be honest, dude, um, this movie was fucking, it made me, it, it never made me feel the, like one emotion other than like uneasiness, right? Around the character that that walking like around the Joker's character. The only constant emotion that I felt was uneasiness. Uh everything else was like empathy. Uh some of it was hate and like anger. Some of it was just like relating more to his struggle with the comedy and the cuz he's pursuing a career as a stand-up comic. And it's, it's a, you know, obviously he's struggling for different reasons than most people, but a lot of people struggle because of the fucking reasons that he was struggling uh, with. And, and once you, once you fucking figure out why this fucking guy ticks the way that he does, it's just, and I'm not giving away any spoilers here. Don't worry. I realized I should have said that fucking five minutes ago. Uh, maybe people tuned out. Who cares? You're here. Um, I'm not saying any spoilers, but they, once you find out like why this guy, you just have this uneasiness around him the whole time. Honestly, it's like, dude, uh, uh, what did you expect? You know, it's like this, this, there's a fucking, there's a great, there's a great moment in the movie where he, he's holding a, this is early on too. So I'm not giving anything away. It's early on, he's on a bus, and he's reading his journal, where he just writes jokes and fucking crazy psycho shit, too. Draws, like, like, cuts out pictures of black babies and fucking glues them to the back of his notebook for some reason. 
but he writes on this notebook it's it says um the funny thing about having a mental illness is that people expect you to act like you don't or something like that and it's so true dude because everybody gets so uncomfortable around the topic of mental illness uh i did a fucking i did a uh improv scene at an improv show an improv comedy show once uh I did a scene with an older man where we were both like little loony dudes in our fucking apartment, like convincing each other to go off our meds. And it was so over the top and just fucking goofy. And after the show, the directors were like, oh, yeah, sometimes I'll just, yeah, just try not to uh, talk about mental illness. Like in this case, it didn't cross the line, but you know, it's just something that we want to avoid. And like, uh, I'm just like, dude, don't don't address mental illness in an improv comedy show are you fucking kidding me like do you know how many people have mental illnesses at this fucking theater including myself including fucking or or childhood traumas or you know like um so it's hard not to relate in that in that sense um not i don't have like a diagnosed mental illness but you know i i i have anxiety and it's it's something that i haven't had for a very long time but uh it's definitely like once you know what anxiety is i think everyone kind of realizes that we all have it to some degree right and depending on you can kind of like make the meter go more toward one towards one side like if you sleep well and if you're staying a little bit off social media and not using it more than like a half hour maybe an hour a day i don't know what the fucking max should be um and you're like doing the things you want. You're spending time outside, right? You're gonna you're gonna see that bar lower, to like just below the one on the ten, like right between zero and one. But if you're like, if you're fucking, like like, uh, you know, staying up late because you're working it, working late, and then you gotta work early in the morning, and you're like not getting enough sleep, and you're eating fucking, just oodles and fucking mac and cheese noodles and mac and cheese and fucking drinking coca-cola right at like 11 p.m you're gonna you're gonna be facing a lot more anxiety than the first person uh so i think everyone kind of i think it's like a little meter that we all have and some of us just don't really see that ever flicker um depending on the situation that we're we're going through right in our lives um or depending on our childhood, you know, it's just to go back to this fucking Joker movie, it's like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to ruin it, you know. Just go watch the fucking thing, um, and and don't be afraid to feel whatever you're feeling as you're watching it, right? There's there's a lot of there's a lot of scenes where you feel scared and you feel how you should feel when you watch what you're watching, right? Um, you know, a lot of people were complaining about violence and, uh, and I heard this on another podcast on a double toasted and they said, uh, they reviewed movies. They said people are complaining about the violence and, uh, you know, this is just, this is showing violent scenes and making you feel uncomfortable as you're watching them. So it's like, it's honoring the fucking act that it's showing it's not playing it up for laughs or trying to like say that violence is okay or any like you know it's just showing you something that exists in the world um and if you want to pretend that it doesn't dude then uh you got other things to worry about other than this joker movie but uh yeah go watch this because it's a once in a probably probably since Birdman I have not felt about a movie this way um and Birdman is not like my favorite movie of all time or anything but it's just there's something about like the cinematic aspect of it and the way that it just sucks you in and it makes you feel like you're kind of losing your fucking mind as you're watching it because it's so it's kind of like yeah, it's just like uh, I don't know. I'm stop stop talking about the movie uh, at this point. If I haven't sold you, right, then uh, then um, you probably weren't gonna watch it anyway. But it's a 
it's a dope movie. So I went and watched that yesterday, <laughs> right? How do you segue out of that? Um, so, uh, yeah, this fucking violent shit movie. Uh, just fucking watch it. And uh, so my day's uh, ACL, right? Um, Damien Paula, go. Um, no. I don't know. I don't know, man. Uh, what else is going on with me? Let me see my little notes. Um, I write little notes every now and then. Just because of the shit that happens. Yeah, man. So, I'm still going to my meetings. My codependent anonymous meetings. Which I'm not supposed to talk about. Uh, or not supposed to give out details. Or whatever the fuck. I don't know the rules. Um, but, uh... It's been tougher. It's or It's been tougher? Tough? tough it's the last two have been tough to go to and to sit through the whole thing you know because there's this one fucking woman that goes and you know there was like 15 of us two weeks ago and we've got about 40 ish minutes to do the sharing part of the night which is kind of what everyone goes there for uh and so we say like oh yeah it's probably best to keep it like at three three minutes max because of how many people there are and it's her turn and she just fucking went on it was like three minutes and she was talking about like and then the neighbor's dog did this and uh the neighbor's dog just was 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 off leash in the front yard and then it's five minutes and the, then it took a poop and i was just watching all of this and and it's seven minutes and then the neighbor, and I'm just like, dude, are you even here to talk about your fucking codependency? What the fuck are you talking about right now? That's how I felt when I was there. <laughs> and uh, and it's also, I mean, I keep saying exercise, right, for all these things that happen to me. But it felt like a good exercise and just trying to trying to embody empathy instead of fucking rage because... Of something that felt unfair or just like wasting my time it's like dude all right maybe she's maybe she is going through some shit and she's just like she really needs those extra seven minutes right but fucking so do so do 14 other people in this room it's not just about me wanting the time i don't give a fuck about me getting the time to speak it's just like it creates a tension in the room when you go over three minutes and nobody's saying anything. And if I had been the fucking group leader, I probably would have said something. But, uh, yeah, maybe I should have said something anyway, you know? Like, hey, hey, Linda, hey, Linda, come on, come on. It's been five minutes. It's been five minutes. Wrap it up, wrap it up, you know? Like, what's, is there, is that so wrong, you know? Is that too violent? Is that too aggressive? Like, just fucking standing up for yourself in the group and like calling someone out when they're making a mistake they might not have even realized they're making it's like when you have food in your fucking teeth and people that see it don't tell you right it's like dude who are you doing this for you're fucking avoiding this perceived feeling that you're gonna get when you say oh do you have a little flake in your a little flake of spinach in your front two teeth Right? Because you think the other person is going to be like, oh my fucking god, like, why are you, oh, why are you pointing that out? Like, <laughs> you fucking f weirdo. Right? Like, you're doing us a favor when you point that shit out. Come on. Stop acting like children. Um, I don't even know what the fuck I was just talking about. But, uh, yeah, Linda. Linda, Linda, Linda. Um, I went there this Wednesday, this past Wednesday, two nights ago, and what do you know? What do you know? Linda did it again, right? And this time, this time, it was me and her and one other person, and there was 10 minutes left, and then they fucking start, and she's going past three, past four, past five, past six, she finishes... And of course, then they're like, "Oh, we've got one for, we've got time for one more person to share," and the dude in front of me is just like, "Oh, I, I'm fucking," just like beats me to it, right? He's like, "Hi, I'm fucking Johnson. I'm codependent," and I'm just like, "Fuck." All right then, 
but uh but i've been trying to not force myself to share when i go because i feel like sometimes i feel like i need to have something to talk about instead of just to feel how i feel when i'm there right which has been like frustrated at linda (laughs) i don't know i don't know how to fucking gauge situations very well lately um but that fucking that's been a little bit of a uh yeah i don't know these meetings felt like something that i looked forward to and now it feels like god is fucking linda gonna be there right and her real name's not linda so go fuck yourself if you're like oh you shouldn't be talking about just her name's not linda all right it's samantha okay (laughs) uh yeah and and the last two times i just had to leave i left like five minutes early because i was just like all right dude like i left what kind of right after that fucking linda girl linda woman she's like 60 dude maybe she's got alzheimer's or something alzheimer's alzheimer's if you're from like fucking memphis yeah maybe she's got her own mental thing going on i don't know you never know these days uh but yeah so that's been going on and i uh I wanted to talk, I didn't get to talk about this in my group, but uh, I wanted to talk about just how um, how hurtful some people have been, you know? And uh, I got a message, dude. I got a message from somebody that I that I grew up with, right? Somebody that was like a, like a parental figure to me. Um, somebody that took care of me when my parents were either working or just fucking doing their own thing there there was like people at my house all the time and one of these people fucking just sent me a message and was like you're you're fucking ruining your life by doing what you're doing right now uh she saw this video that i posted and and it was uh it was my one last talk right where i'm talking about all the things that i'm most ashamed of and all the things that i'm like just that I that I feel like I haven't talked about or haven't felt comfortable talking about, right? I'm trying to use this just to to rid myself of some shame, right? And she fucking sent me like a 500 word message on Facebook and was like you're just a fucking angry kid and you're spoiled and you deserve to be hit when you were younger. Maybe then you would have learned and like you don't know what it is to go through a bad time. Like I went through a bad fucking time and I got, I got fucking hit and I got tied up and all this shit. And I was like, holy shit, dude. Um, like on one hand, it's like, damn, look at the impact that this kind of thing is having, right? Look at the reaction that it's getting out of people and, and how, how upset this person might has to still be about the things that happened to her that she has to take it out on me because I'm talking about it and she's not. Um, and this isn't me putting myself on a pedestal. It's just the fucking facts, right? Like, I, I'm doing this thing for me. I'm not doing this for anybody else. And, and here she is fucking just look, trying to, like, stab me in the nipples, right? Just like, you're a fucking piece of shit and your friends aren't good for you they're only like she she insulted like every facet of my life right she's like a, a sick person can't help a sick person and i'm like god damn you got a narrow fucking mind and a narrow view of the world um and i can say that now but i i mean i i, I have to admit like when i read that shit i was like ouch dude um i've been saying dude a lot um just ouch woman (laughs) um i thought i thought you loved me i still love you but that doesn't sound like somebody saying something to someone that they love um especially after not having spoken in years and not having even asked questions not having done anything except form your own opinion uh about a situation that you know nothing about right she was like i was there your whole life and it's like nah bitch you were there until i was like 10 and then you fucking moved to switzerland so if you think you know me 
Yeah. Ha. Mm. Um. So yeah, that that happened. The and it's funny, dude. This happened the day before my birthday. And uh, you want to know what she ended the message with? Um. Yeah, she said, "Sick people can't help sick people." And. But but at the end of the day, like you won't you won't fucking let me pull it up so I don't make shit up. Um, let me pull this thing up because it's unbelievable. I mean, it still it still kind of upsets me to read it. Um, yeah, she says, uh, "God bless you, and that He changes that heart you have in you for love, so that you can start to do something to help yourself first instead of helping others." Because a sick person can't help another sick person, with all due respect. Happy birthday, right? It's like, dude, I don't even, I don't even need to fucking, I don't even need to, like, um, put you down for doing that, right? Because that's just a hurtful thing. And, and once I got over my, my hurt and my, feelings around what she said I was able to see that you're probably hurting a lot too Um, I'm sure of it I mean I don't really I don't really know your family very well I know your adoptive family I know you know I know some of your family some of the people you call family today but um, yeah I mean I, I didn't know about all this being tied up and hit and abused shit so I'm sure I'm sure it's tough for you and so uh I just messaged her back like I wish you the best but goodbye and uh you know because I don't need to be um I I blocked her and I blocked fucking I blocked a couple people because of that because it's not about like oh yeah you're going to do this then I'm going to fucking block you to fucking piss you off it's like dude I just like reading that like made me feel very very upset you know for a long period of time like considerably in a day I don't need to like it's like if a fucking close friend of yours just out of the blue sent you a fucking message and was just like you know the other day like you fucking faggot like just started like calling you a bunch of fucking racial slurs and just like in an offensive way like you're not even smart and your fucking parents never loved you and you you deserve to eat shit and like it's just like ah you're gonna keep that person around right like it's not about upsetting you dude it's just about like my own fucking uh self-respect uh at that point but yeah i wanted to say something about it because i didn't get to at my meeting and and uh yeah, I mean, I know I, I've said this a couple times. I don't know if I've said it on the podcast, but I get that polarizing an, uh, a group of people with something that you have created or something you have said or something you've done is generally like a good sign, right? That it's, that it's something that is impactful. Because if my fucking video is just me, like, oh, I went to, like, the my one last talk is that I want to save the whales. And, like, she would be like, ah, oh, yeah, fuck it, whatever, okay, yeah. Just, like, ignore it, because it's, like, I don't know. If my talk was fucking garbage, then there there would be no, no, nobody would fucking pay attention to it, right? Like, so it's a, it's a both good and bad when you get negative reactions, because if people go to the lengths that some of the people who say they are the closest to me just start insulting me, that hurts, you know. Even if you can be logical and and ration rationale, your fucking whatever the ration your way out of it, and be like, yeah, well, they're probably going through some hurt, you know, like kind of like I just did right now. Like, it still hurts, man. Um, there's no denying that uh, because these are the people that you know. I knew her for ten, twelve years, and I knew some of these other people for more than that, longer than that. So you do start to question, like, damn, I mean, how long have I felt this way for, right? And is and how, how much of it has been because of these people that I was surrounded by, you know? When I was, like, 13 and I discovered fucking Texas Hold'em and I was like, holy shit, dude, this is so exciting. 
it makes me like it, it I've never I haven't felt this excited in fucking my whole life right and and then the people around you are like yeah gambling is not good and like yeah you got to focus on school though like suppressing this thing that you discovered that you're like oh shit I'm fucking I want to do this all the time uh, I'm good at it too I can make money I'm good at it I want to develop this skill I want to become like a professional and they're like yeah that's not gonna happen dude like that's fucking everybody in Cancun Mexico um at least the people that I fucking, like, at least the adults around me, right? Um, so, yeah, man, it hurts. Uh, it hurts. That's all I'm going to say about it. And uh, I feel like I've been trying to ignore it, right? It's like, oh, try and focus on, like, the good people and, like, the people that are opening up to you and all this shit. And it's like... Yeah, I want to recognize that stuff too, but I shouldn't ignore the fact that this is upsetting and that it is a little bit shocking. Um, And most of all, it's just like outright, just intentionally hurtful, right? That's the thing. It's like, if if you let slip the fucking, you know, if you let slip a little retard here and there and somebody's like, hey, you shouldn't say that. And you're like, oh, I'm sorry, I won't say it around you again. Then it's like, oh, all right, dude. Like, that's not something you said intentionally to hurt somebody. Um, yeah. And so yeah, so that's been that's been going on. That's been going on. The book came out yesterday, October third, and you can find that on Amazon. It is called "We All Wear Masks: A Memoir." If you don't type all that shit in, it's not gonna show up. It's We All Wear Masks, a memoir, and it's got a red cover, and you can only buy the Kindle version right now, but by the time this thing comes out, yeah, you'll probably be able to buy the paperback edition too. So just go search that shit if you're interested in reading about it. Um, You know, it's uh, a lot of people ask me, uh, why do you feel like you can write a memoir? at such a young age and it's like I don't it's not like it's not like I thought like oh yeah I'm 23 like now is the age when I can write a memoir it's just like no I felt like I had something that I needed to fucking say and I said it and if you don't believe that 23 or 22 or 21 year olds have things to say then you're part of the problem buddy because you're not treating everybody as equal um and so yeah go buy that shit if you like to read i know a lot of people don't i'll i'm still working on the audiobook i might have that out in the next month or so um i might just put that shit up for free on youtube you know give you guys a little treat a little free little biscuit and then maybe get shut down by amazon or something i don't know what the policies for that are um i don't know i own the rights you know there shouldn't be an issue with that uh so yeah man i think i'm gonna wrap it up there i think i'm i've been trying to keep these a little bit shorter right and and do the longer ones for when there's like an event like mexico city or something that needs to span a couple podcasts um yeah go watch the joker movie um and i did not get paid to say that i just really think you know you know what go watch that movie and if you like watching that movie, go fucking read my book. And that's not me saying like, oh, because I'm as good as, as them. It's like, no, it's just it's it's similar themes, you know. It's a lot of similar fucking like uh, vibes of just like angst and like frustration and, and self-hatred and anger and all this crap that uh, that is very damaging to a person. Um so yeah, go do those two things. If you're in Austin, go go splurge a little on ACL, right? Don't be shy. This opportunity only comes around uh, once every year. <laughs> so maybe you can be shy. Maybe you can go next year, right? Maybe you can wait for... Uh, who's got a new album coming out? Maybe you can go watch Kanye West play some gospel music <laughs> in the park. Let's go watch Kanye West play gospel in the park. Uh, Alright, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna go fuck myself.